Rhythm is indeed the key to good sending. If your code is to mean anything to others in the radio net, then you've got to send rhythmically. So now we've moved back from the cockpit uh, through the bomb bay. Obviously, there's no crew in the bomb bay, mm -hmm. uh, but they do move through there. Um, do you know why there's doors on the compartments? I don't know the specific reasoning of that, but I imagine it would be to keep wind flow down That's a good point. Yeah. Um, and kind of insulate you from some of the wind and the noise. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So his duty station, he would be sat right here um, in this seat. Um, he's got his own armor plate for his seat oh, yeah. that attached to the seat there mm -hmm. um, because he does not have any armor um, yeah. bulkheads in yep. the front of the back because the radios mm -hmm. have to sit there. Um, so uh, he would sit here. He's got his Morse code um, yeah. plunger. I, I don't know the technical term for that, mm -hmm. but his Morse code thing. Um, and then he's got radios all around us there's five here six there um and a bunch behind this door too so okay. his whole job was to operate the um the communications of the aircraft to uh, uh be in contact with other b-17s fighter units um ground units mm -hmm. so he he controlled all of that yeah Bombardier, have you seen the can of Plantis Peanuts? No, Captain. Haven't seen them. Navigator, have you seen my peanuts? No, sir. Haven't seen them since we left. Pilot to crew, I need to locate the Plantis Peanuts. Crew, call in. Right waist, left waist. Radio room, do you have my peanuts? Radio operator, do you hear me? No, sir, we haven't seen them. We're gone. That same great fresh roasted taste. That's Platters. Platters, fresh roasted daily since 1906. Can you speak on what's going on here with the rabbits putting the peanuts? So in the footage of the bell, the filmmaker, I forget his name right now, mm -hmm. but uh, he went on a mission with the, with the Memphis Bell. And in the footage of that, you can see on the navigator's table are a uh, uh, can of planter's peanuts and a rabbit's foot. Mm -hmm. And so we put an original planter's peanuts can back in there where it was and then put the rabbit's foot in there too. So that was in the William Wyler footage uh, That's, on yeah. the radio operator's table? Yep. Oh. Yep, wow. that was in the footage. Okay. So r radios are a whole field of interest that you have to be into to really understand. And I don't know n not much about radios. So uh, I'm I, not a radio guy yeah, either, to be honest There's not many with, out there, yeah. but there would be someone that could look at all this and make sense of it. But the one thing that I will say is it looks complete like everything is in here so yeah, yeah um yeah. to my to my knowledge everything is in here i didn't do any of the work in here mm -hmm. it was uh done by another guy um so from from what i know every radio is currently installed in here so yeah. this is how it would have looked uh okay. when the bell was operating cool and then his armament is uh for this particular f model uh straight up 50 yeah he has a single 50 cal that's on rails he can actually stow it backwards um or he can bring it forwards to use it to shoot upwards so that's why that cavity is essentially above uh the main fuselage 
Yep, ammunition. you got it. Okay. Yeah, then this is the, his barrel strap is uh, above there too, so you can actually see about where it would sit. Oh shit. Okay. Then what do we have uh, with this chart here? So that's your uh, CG, center of gravity computing chart. Mm -hmm. So based on how much fuel, how much uh, uh, bombs and stuff like that you had, you would uh, it would change the center of gravity, so you'd have to compute that out. Really? Yep. Huh. Okay. Um, do we know much about what's under the floor access panels here? Um, I know that the uh, anti-ice fluid um, Reservoir. tank is mm -hmm. down there, mm -hmm. um, and so you actually fill it through that hole in the floor right there. Okay. Wow. Um, and then I've noticed uh, this, the interior of the 17, um, in this particular one, there's no paint. Yeah. Is that standard? This airplane and most B-17s did not get the green interior paint, only in the cockpit. Really? You notice the nose didn't have it either. I didn't notice. I so, didn't. yeah, the, the, the Bombardier Navigator Station doesn't. It was literally only the cockpit in wow. most B-17s. The later G's got the interior paint, but this is... Maybe that's why I'm what? thinking. I've only ever really been in the G's. So. Yeah, so our G is interiorly okay. painted too. Well, it's the Smithsonian's G. Okay. But uh, it, there's, there's his interior. It yeah, used to be I, in here. I, I thought all of the interiors were green, but this is just bare metal. Yeah. yeah, that's how most of the early ones are. Like our D model, the Swoose, is the same thing, just the painted yeah. cockpit. Okay. A study was done from November 1942 till December 1943 that studied specifically uh, heavy bombers above Europe for the uh, Army Air Forces and the study was done for medical support and with the goal to consider the crew members in the plane most susceptible to both injury from ground flak and fighter interceptor aircraft and the goal of the study was done to uh, look at which places in the plane would be best suited to add additional armor to protect the crews. Once the study was done, uh, it outlined the most susceptible to injury and death uh, positions within the aircraft. Of the study done, out of 1,293 incidences of wounds or death, the radio operator suffered 131 incidences, putting them in top 10% of the most dangerous or susceptible places in the aircraft, tying with uh, waste gunner number one and waste gunner number two. And then if you look right on the edge right there, you can actually see three patches from flak damage that are right, wow. yeah. So that's flak damage. Yeah, that is flak damage. Wow. So on the bulkhead, uh, before we go back into the waste, we have what looks like some tools. Mm -hmm. um, so what do we have going on, like manual uh, uh, landing gear equipment? Yeah, so those are um, cranks that you could use to uh, start the engines, lower the landing gear, the tail gear, and the bomb doors or the flaps. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, in the bomb bay, uh, there are areas where you can put those cranks in and mm -hmm. crank down the landing gear, or crank down the landing gear, and crank down the bomb bay doors. Wow. Okay. Um, and that's what these bars do as well. Mm -hmm. Those are extenders. Crank extensions. Too. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, being in the radio room now would be a good time to um, touch on aircraft power. So before engines are even running, um, are there batteries on the plane? Yeah, there are batteries on the plane. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a ground, um, a ground power attachment point. Yeah, so we that. There's once the the, uh, the the batteries essentially power the first engine to start up. Yeah, um, engine number two is mm -hmm. always the one that you start up the inboard on the left side. Okay. Um, because it has the it has the generator that runs the rest of the okay. that runs the uh, electrical system. Um, and this plane doesn't have like an APU. Like a pony motor? No. Okay. No. Alright. Uh, I don't think it does. B-17s did. They did? They, it sits, it's a big unit that sits in the back. Shoo Shoo Baby had them. Okay. Most of the time when they got to Europe, they were 500 plus pounds and the crew would just throw them. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Okay. 